Julian here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make deeper, more organic style house music, kind of like Cainternada. Um, but before I start, I actually want to let everyone know, I've just updated my Patreon, um, so I have two new tiers here. Um, essentially what I have are, they're sort of like sample pack tiers, so I know a lot of you guys know, under my videos I have sample packs, um, I have one under this video, and usually they're for sale. However, with my Patreon now, you can subscribe. There are two tiers. There's a $10 tier and then a $20 tier. You can see them here. And with those, you get, you get the sample packs from the video. So essentially, with the $10 tier, you get half or eight of the 16 packs that drop each month. And then with the $20 tier, you get all 16 packs that drop each month. Um, now, as a bit of a sign-up bonus right now, you can see right here, I've actually uh, uploaded all my sample packs from my previous videos, even some of the free ones, um, just all of them are in there. And if you sign up for my Patreon right now, you'll be able to get this. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to leave this up, but I guess I'll just leave it up until it seems like everybody has gotten it. Um, so yeah, so make sure to check that out. My Patreon is in the description. And yeah, let's dive in. So I'm going to go layer by layer here. The first layer we have is a sample, which sounds like this. So this is pretty straightforward. I just took this sample. So just like a pretty straightforward kind of house sample, like, you know, something you would use in like lo-fi house, something like that. And what I did was I pitched it down minus three and then I put it through some processing. So we have a low pass filter, which actually I can delete that automation. But yeah, we have this low pass filter here. Pretty straightforward, just taking out the highs. Um, and then that's going into the saturator, which is set like this. I turned the drive up a bit, and then I played around with the analog clip settings. Um, this kind of works with the filter. You can see there's a bit of the resonance boost there. What that's essentially doing is it's putting more signal at that frequency range into the saturator. And if you don't know the way a saturator or any kind of distortion works, it's essentially the more signal you put into it, the more distortion you're going to get. So at that little spot, we're sort of getting a little bit more distortion. And yeah, it's just adding this nice kind of crunch to the sound. Um, so then after that, I have this compressor, which is just side chaining it to the kick. And then I have an EQ8 cutting out some low end. So the next layer here is this little conga sample. It sounds like this. It's pretty simple. It just plays at the end there. I just thought it was a nice touch. It was like some kind of percussion that I feel like you would hear in like a K Tronada track. Um, all it is is just like an 808 conga or like just some kind of synth tom. And yeah, it's just like a small kind of fill there at the end. Um, so then the next layer we have here is the bass line, which sounds like this. So this is probably the most complicated part of this whole thing. Um, and yeah, it's honestly not too difficult. Basically, all that I did was I just followed the chord progression from the sample. You can hear it just kind of moves up with that. And then I just sort of added like some more interesting notes in there. So that was just kind of the idea. It's like I wrote out, I think I just did like quarter notes like, like this on each note essentially and then I just kind of like split it up and started adding like extra little things and you know some little kind of stops here and there and all the little slides but it's really not too crazy if you just know what you're doing with like staying in key honestly writing these kind of bass lines if you just put in a little bit of work isn't too difficult um so then for the sound on this one all it is is a triangle wave and operator um, and I guess that has a bit of a pitch envelope on it. You can hear it just gives it a little bit of an impact. Um, and then I have this going into a saturator, which just has a bit of drive. It's just adding a bit more harmonic content on top of the triangle wave. Here's without it. And then with it, it just helps it cut through a little bit more and it makes it a little bit more audible. You can hear when I turn it on. It really does that. Um, but yeah, so this bass line is pretty important for this. Like, it really drives this track, especially with the like the flow of the sample. 
It's important to sort of write your bass lines like with your sample in mind. Because you can hear it really helps with the energy there. Um, so then the next thing we have here is this kick, which sounds like this. And yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a nice punchy, kind of like, almost like a hip-hop style kick. These are typically the ones I hear Keishu not using in his music, so I figured I would use it here. And then on that, I have a low-pass filter, so similar to what I did with the sample, where I have the low-pass filter with a bit of resonance, and then that's going into a saturator. It was just beefing it up a little bit. And then I have this second little kick down here, which just has the same processing. Um, it just does like this, and then like this. Um, and the reason why I have that on a second track is because everything, and really mostly just the uh, bass line and sample, all of those things are sidechained to the kick. Um, and so if I had like the double kick on this channel, I'll show you what happens. Like if we do like this, you can hear that bass line and the sample are a little bit harder to hear because they're getting kind of like lost under that second kick with the side chain. So I just put one on another track that those aren't side chain to. And yeah, problem solved. Um, so then the next thing here is this hi-hat. It's pretty simple. It's just a 909 hi-hat. Um, here's the original sample. And then all I did to give it like some more organic kind of texture was I just pitched it down minus three and then I added a low pass filter. And yeah, it just makes it kind of more like lo-fi slash organic. Um, so then after that I have the shaker which sounds like this. And so on this, it's pretty simple. It's just a shaker loop. You can hear it slowed down a little bit. I have it on repitch mode. Um, and then that is going into a low pass filter, which has that resonance boost there. Similar to what we were doing with like the sample and the saturator, um, except there's no saturator after it. It's just adding that resonance boost, which still gives it kind of like a lo-fi type of more organic sound. And then I have that side chained by the kick. Um, so you can just kind of hear. It's just making it flow more like with the track. Like if I turn off that side chain, and then turn it on. You can hear it just makes that shaker like sort of fit in um, a little bit better. Um, so then after that, I have this clap, which sounds like this. And yeah, nothing really too crazy there. Um, all it's about with these is just like finding the right type of clap. So like here, I have this kind of nice sort of like almost like a sort of hand clap type of sound. To me it sounds like maybe a hand clap or like a few hand claps layered together and then pitched down. Um, but yeah, this type of clap is very important. Like you wouldn't want to use just like a regular old, like if I get, like let's try just like a 707 clap. You wouldn't want to use something like that. It just doesn't sound right, but this clap has that right kind of organic feel. Now, another thing with the clap, the clap is obviously, as you can tell, very important here. Um, but another thing with the clap, as you can hear, is it's a little bit offbeat. So I move the hits on the two and the four. That's when the clap hits. Just back a tiny bit. And you can hear it hits like right before that kick. If I quantize it, it's more straightforward. Um, so this just gives it a bit more groove. This is something Kei Trinata does a lot, and it's something that a lot of people do, actually, just to give your beats, like, a little bit more of a human kind of feel. It's cool. It makes your head bob a little bit more. Um, so then after that, I just have this vinyl noise just to sort of round things off. And yeah, that's just adding some nice sort of atmosphere. Um, so that's really it for this one. Like I said, you know, the main things to think about are, like, the sample and the bass line, just sort of writing those together and making them work together. I definitely wanted to cover that in this video. Um, and then just all the stuff with the drums and then the vinyl noise. So that's going to be it for today, guys. Make sure to let me know what you think of this video in the comments. And make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. Once again, you can get the project file and samples from this video in the description. You can also get them on my Patreon, which is in the description. Make sure to check that out. Um, and yeah, thank you again, everybody, and I will see you tomorrow with another tutorial.